we're here with uh, Matthew from St. Louis Bandits Baseball. And uh, first of all, you know, I want to thank you for, for coming on and talking a little bit about your program. And uh, I'd love to kind of, you know, just, you know, walk through, you know, your background in baseball and then really kind of get into your program and some of the success that you've had uh, or that appears that, that you're having. Um, so I'd love to kind of just uh, kind of give a, a background on you, you know, where you came from, did you play growing up, or what kind of brought you all the way up into, you know, St. Louis Band before you started, you know, coaching or working there? Yeah, Sean, I want to first start by thanking you for having us on and be able to highlight our organization and some of the yeah. things that we're doing here in St. Louis. So my background is I played with the Rawlings Tigers out of St. Louis in high school. Then okay. I at Maryville University and coming out. I had Tommy John, my senior high school. Mm, yeah. from there, went to St. Charles Community College, got re-injured, and that's kind of how I ended up in coaching. I oh, okay. The, the second surgery, uh, Matt Shadow, who owns the Bandits, actually is my cousin. He was one of a few organizations who offered me a job coming out, and he actually offered me the title and to run kind of the whole youth program. So it's okay. Great opportunity. That's kind of what I'm doing now. I'm the Bandits Youth Coordinator. Uh, I coach our top 14 U team. I coach our top nine U team. I am a volunteer assistant at Lindenwood University in St. Charles, Missouri, where I work with infielders. And I also teach hitting and pitching lessons at the Fieldhouse in O'Fallon, which is where we train out of here in St. Louis. Awesome. Okay. So yeah, definitely had a, you know, career cut short a little bit, uh, which is, it seems to be a very common occurrence there. Um, and, you know, which is a, you know, blessing in disguise, I would imagine for lots of, you know, parents out there that you kind of get these, you know, this top talent, you know, being able to coach in their local communities now because of an unfortunate incident, right? Yeah. And, and these injuries are unfortunate to happen. We, we see a lot with coaches everywhere. I call it a blessing in disguise at the time of some of those devastating being done and playing in the game you love. Mm -hmm. I'm in a great spot where I'm able to be around baseball and be around kids and kind of share my passion for what I do. And it's become a blessing in disguise, become something that I really enjoy doing. It's something I do. That's, that's all the only thing I do for a living. Is yeah, coach. absolutely. I do a lot of it and a lot of baseball. So it's awesome. Yeah. I can stay in the game and teach. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. So, so right now, you know, I kind of looked on the website, and I think you have about thirty teams, kind of plus or minus there. Um, I, can you talk a little bit, and maybe you know, or you know, what uh, what that growth looked like? I'm guessing it didn't start at thirty teams. The organization it had to grow. It has um, grown significantly. The band yeah. started in the fall of 2012 with Matt Shadow and Pat Clooney. Matt actually had one team, I believe it was 14 when they started. Okay. All the way through their, through high school, he added on, obviously added kids, subtracted kids, and he started mm -hmm. adding more teams as it went. All of a sudden, I know last year, I think we had 24 total teams, and this year we're up to 34. And a 34, big wow. that this year is we added a softball side of the program. Yes. Mike Reynolds came on this year and is our softball director, and she has – seven softball teams, which is a huge help in building the organization. It's just kind of a branching off in a different direction as well. She has a lot of great people, a lot of great coaches as well that are training and helping out on the softball side. So it really yeah. helps growth. Hey, now, have you seen, I guess, uh, any extra growth? I mean, obviously it sounded like you were, you know, trajecting, you know, upwards and things were going well and you know, having success. Did you see any, you know, extra growth because of adding the the softball side as well right just kind of you know more exposure or new you know families being introduced to the program anything like that we did add in quite a new few or quite a few families that had kids who tried out for the softball side who ended up liking it and what we did on the baseball side but the biggest thing we have now is we have a lot of people from the baseball side who love the bandits and what we've done and been around for quite a few years who have younger girls who have either helped start teams or their daughters are on teams. We have cousins of kids who've been around. So it's kind of just become more of a family thing with adding the softball science. We saw, it's pretty cool to see actually yeah. all the families that now stay involved in the organization. 
Yeah. Yeah. And that's awesome. I, I think it's, it's really great. I mean, you said 2012, so we're you know, seven years from one team to, to 34. Like, I, I feel like that's you know, amazing and definitely a, a testament to, you know, how you guys are running that organization and, you know, keeping everyone within that family. So I think that's really awesome. Yeah. And one of the things like we have what, 34 in total teams now, when I think about it, I don't think we have in 34 teams because every, all these coaches and the people we have are so close. And we're a pretty close group as an organization. We have a lot of people who've been around a long time. We have a lot of parents who have kids on multiple teams. So it's one of those where you kind of feel like a small family where everyone kind of knows each other. And it, it really doesn't seem like, like we are as big as we really are. That, yeah, that's awesome. And I think, you know, that, that we're, you know, family, right. Being able to kind of create that, um, I, I would imagine, you know, really helps create a, an overall atmosphere and, you know, something that people want to stay involved in or as they age out, uh, Oh, my cousin's playing. So, you know, you've got to join the bandits here. Right. So yeah, it probably becomes, you know, easier to, to kind of keep everyone involved that way. Yeah, and it's awesome to see, and it's awesome. To, it's awesome that the growth that we've had, even since I've been there, it's my second year, going from year one to year two, and getting to know everyone, building relationships. And I don't. I think I got out and saw every team play at least three times last year. I go to their practices throughout the year occasionally. I try to get to every, at least two of everybody's, so I get to get to know a lot of the kids, a lot of the families, the coaches, and kind of have that atmosphere and that support as an organization. Awesome. Now, are you, are you running uh, practices year round? Do you have, uh, you know, tryouts uh, that happen again each season? What does that look like for you? Cause I mean, you're still, you know, North enough. It's not year round, right? Yeah. And we are, and we are a select organizations. So we do okay. have tryouts every year. Our tryouts are at the beginning of July. Typically that's kind of the, the trend in St. Louis. We're sticking right with the trend. Okay. Yeah. Uh, a lot of our teams will play fall ball after tryouts and they'll play two, two, two or three tournaments in a league or two or three tournaments, depending on soccer and other things. And then most of our teams take a few months off. Most of them start, they're done mid October and they're starting back up beginning of December or January, depending on the team. Okay. And they'll practice. Is that... oh. and they'll practice Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. yeah they'll practice at an indoor facility, the field house in O'Fallon in january february march or december january february march depending on how it's worked out and then they'll play 10 to 12 in tournaments typically and then a league depending on the age and team so it kind of varies based on each team yeah yeah everything's going to vary especially the ages now is that something you know as an organization you advocate for the the kids to take time off uh, or is it just kind of something that uh, naturally happens it's something that, that naturally happens, happens, but as an organization, we push to coaches, hey, we don't need to be throwing bullpens in November. Mm -hmm. kids, kids' arms need time off. That time is important to stay healthy and avoid all the injuries that the game is trending in. We have plenty for the organization because it's just the nature of the beast and arms go down and yeah, injuries yeah. happen. But we do our best to try to guide and encourage like we have a pretty strict organizational pitch count that we send out. Now okay. we every team doing that. We're not getting pitch reports each week, but we send out a guideline that we think makes sense and encourage our coaches and teams to follow in that direction. Yeah. And I would think with, you know, so many coaches and, you know, people involved in the organization that, you know, there's probably a lot of experience you can, you know, bring on to talk about, you know, whether it's overuse or, you know, any topic and, uh, and, you know, involving the game, you know, especially yourself, you know, you got injured, you know, there's lots that, you know, you can draw on from a coach and it may not be that team, but like, Oh, Hey, this coach of 14, you, he went through this situation as, uh, and they can, you know, talk to them, talk to them at the facility, that type of thing. So it's probably a lot of different people you can kind of pull from to kind of help uh, guide each team. Yeah, and that's part part of, of where the organization is so important in being close. Mm -hmm. They're able to have those conversations with a coach. If they have a question, they're able to call me or Matt Shadow or whoever in the organization, and we answer a phone or we'll get back with them real quick. And we'll always answer those questions, share any past experiences we may have. Uh, we can share experience that other coaches may have had with arm, with injuries or in, in any type of aspect of the game or anything. So... Mm -hmm. It's a great, it's great to have that, that, that community atmosphere. Yeah. Now, now and kind of 
continue on with the, you know, the size of your organization, um, you know, we work with, you know, teams uh, from all different, you know, backgrounds and organizations. We have, you know, teams from, you know, sizes of yours to, you know, four or five teams to just that one team. And if that's it, that's all that they have. Um, and I, I think it works for, you know, some, some really like the, the small atmosphere, whether it's two or three teams or, or just the one, uh, obviously lots love the, the larger organizations. Why do you think, you know, if I'm moving to St. Louis, right, and I uh, have played competitive uh, somewhere else, but why, why do you think it, it would benefit an athlete to join, you know, a larger organization versus a, a small one with just, you know, two or three teams? So the big thing about joining organizations in St. Louis is it's one of the best ways to find practice, practice facilities in the winter. It's one of the best ways to find training. And okay. When you come to organizations, uh, what you're expecting is training. Like we do, beside myself going out to practices throughout the year, games, we do what we call skills training, which is eight weeks of a coach who comes out and runs for practices in April, May, in April, May. Okay. Whether me, Matt Shadow runs the organization, or some of our other high school coaches, you have that coach for eight weeks for your hour practice at our indoor facility. So those coaches can really shed more light on something that, that maybe our 10U coach does not understand how to teach properly, or he has a question on those coaches are able to come in and kind of give more guidance and more, use kind of more experience in a lot of terms. We have some youth coaches who play at a very high level and know a lot. So they may not be able to, and they may not, not know more, but just bring a different atmosphere or different ideas. Mm -hmm practices yeah i mean that that makes a ton of sense you know just thinking about it that and i kind of touched on that before a little bit right i think you're know, just having lots of different experience and like you said a, a coach may know something and may know something very well but maybe just can't quite communicate it to to that group of, of players and just having another coach who maybe has gone through something similar or just coach that certain topic or you know skill or something but previously with that age group is like hey i tried this before let's try it this way yeah and you, and you and, see it a lot even with our paid coaches like when i go to prep when i go to these practices i'll learn a ton from listening to a coach kind of stepping back and letting him to take control oh that's a different way to look at that that's a different way that might make more sense to explain it to a 10 year old compared to a high school kid or break it down in a different way so coaches have to always be willing to learn, regardless if you're the paid coach at a 10U practice or you're, or you're the 10U coach working with those coaches. This is a game, it, it evolves, it changes, and learning is something that happens every day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. From the, the player side, the coach's side, I think everyone needs to, to keep learning. I mean, we all see it at the top level, right? It's a, the MLB is constantly changing the way the game's played, coached, uh, everything like that. So, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Everyone needs to, to keep evolving and keep learning no matter what success you've had in the past. Absolutely. That's the biggest part of this game that coaches have to understand. If it's if you're going to ABCA and listening to their podcast when it comes to some people they have on, I do that, that a lot when I'm driving. I listen to calls mm -hmm. from the dugout. I listen to driveline baseball's podcasts. I listen to a lot of different areas and I learn a lot of things I could add or just, or just different ideas to what I'm already doing. Yeah. And that's awesome. I think, you know, you know, we do it here too, but you know, podcasts are, are fantastic. And I think, you know, there, there's so many out there that have kind of a, a niche topic or something that, you know, whether it's a coach like yourself or, you know, maybe it's uh, just some you know, program director who may not even um, coach a team, but you know, how can we help improve an organization mm -hmm. for, for parents and you know, how can we, you know, help guide your athlete uh, along the process and, Keep, help them stick with it that type of thing so uh, it's really great that you know you're doing that and i'm sure talking about it and i'm sure a lot of the coaches are doing that as well absolutely we have a lot of coaches who are growing each day and that's what it's all about yeah um one of the things that jumped out to me i you know went through the website and you know i think you know anyone who's joining uh you know a competitive team uh they're, they're probably looking to go and play you know high school or college you know baseball softball you know whatever that looks like um in looking at the goals you know as a program 
and, and I don't know if this was by accident or, or by design, but it kind of jumped out at me is uh, the one, the last goal on the list was preparing athletes for high school or college. Um, and there, there were a few before that. And I just wanted to see if that was intentional or if that's something that you maybe attribute to the success of the organization is that, you know, everyone does want to perform and play at that next level, right? Whether it's their high school team or, you know, scholarships, all that down the road. But if you take that focus away and maybe that pressure away right now, um, are they able to develop more as a, you know, a person, um, you know, uh, and as a player, just building a good, you know, fundamental sound base and then progress to the, some of those more elite teams. Yeah, so we list our goals and we use those goals as kind of something to stay on track of. Mm -hmm. Listing that as our last goal is kind of not by accident, but it's also is not by design either. Okay. One of the things we talk about a lot is becoming the best player that you can become, not necessarily becoming the player to make your high school team tomorrow. Got each it, yeah. Different goal each day is trying to find a way to get better inside of what you do. The one big thing, like what I do with my 14 specifically, when I talk about high school baseball, it's not necessarily about skill set or what you can do as a player. It's more about the effort and energy and what you bring each day to your team and the, and the atmosphere you bring. Most of our kids, when they leave, especially like our most of our 14s are able and go make, 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 make their high school team. It's rare for us to have a 14U kid who did not make his high school team at 15. And one of the big things we, we attribute that, that to is most of them are talented enough and most of them are skilled enough. It's teaching them the, some of the smaller things, the fundamentals, if it's bunning or some smaller things in base running or working through a ground ball defensively or something of that aspect. But the biggest size, size size of what I hit, hit on is the effort, the energy, and what you can, can bring your team each day. And those are the three things I harp on consistently yeah. with my kids. Yeah. And, you know, I think that, you know, kind of speaks volumes to, you know, like I said, the, the program success and, you know, making sure they're or not even making sure, but the reason why you're seeing these, you know, all these athletes make their high school teams is, you know, I think high school coaches are looking for that well-rounded player who can kind of think outside the box and not just focus on, you know, their own individual skills and what they're doing, but, you know, be a good teammate and want to learn and grow with the team and the coach. Yeah, absolutely. I coached high school baseball last year at Duchenne high school. And I can tell I I can tell you we're, we were a no-cut school. We were a pretty small school in St. Louis. Okay. We had a program. But one of the things we've always talked about and we, and we do with our high school, when guys come for high school tryouts, you can cut off – you can X off half the kids after watching them play catch and stretching. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. A lot about a kid, how much effort he puts in stretching. Does he play catch the right way? Does he run on and off the field? There are so many things when I evaluate a player – that I can cross a player off before I even see him to do a baseball steal. And that yeah. happens in every, at every level of high school baseball. You'll go to some of these high schools here in St. Louis. We got some of our big ones. They'll have hundred kids show up to tryouts. They'll have 60 spots mm -hmm. or 50 spots for the whole program. So yeah. they're, kind of, they're, they're, they're just Xing off 20 kids, watching them play catch, watching them walk on off the field, not, not showing up prepared, missing something, uniform isn't tucked in. Those type of things, you have to look the look when you show up to a tryout. And you have, have to do the little things right to get noticed. I, I don't think we could find a coach anywhere who, who, would, who would love to have a kid who runs on off the field every time, who's prepared and shows up early and, and does all the extra things that's needed. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, as a coach, that's, you know, 100% something that you're going to look for because they may not have – you know, the skill, the exact skill that they're, you're looking for. Uh, but I think you could probably tell that they're going to be coachable and, you know, be able to, to learn or, you know, be open to what you're trying to teach them. Yeah. And that coachability is so important because I would mm -hmm. rather have that kid who plays his butt off, who competes, who shows up to practice, runs on off the field compared to a similar and level kid who may be a tad bit better from the baseball standpoint, I'll take take the kid who's not as talented any day, every day who plays that way. I think for almost sure. every coach would. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a very common thought for sure. 
Uh, so switching gears a little bit here, I mean, you obviously have uh, a number of teams. Uh, you've been in, you know, yourself, you know, you played, uh, you know, travel baseball, competitive baseball. I want to talk about tournaments a little bit, and I want to see, you know, how have tournaments evolved? Maybe since you've, you know, played or since you started coaching, um, and that's a very broad topic and it's obviously going to depend on which tournaments you guys are going to um but what is do you have, any, have you seen any major changes in, in the tournaments um and kind of what they look like before to what they're like now it's uh, one of the th one of the th things that we have here in St. Louis, we have four big tournament providers we have okay. baseball we have mm -hmm. greater midwest baseball just gmb we have triple play tournaments and we have game time tournaments each tournament varies in in how they they do things. And some of those coaches, some of those and tournament directors communicate and better than than the next. But they're all I could say are run in pretty well. I don't have a lot good about any of them. I wouldn't say one is much better than and then the next. The big thing is when it comes to do these these tournaments is they're all kind of have teams that are based on different skill level. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it kind of just varies. We have some team. We'll have some teams in the organization that play a lot of game time or triple play. We'll have a lot who don't like one who play almost all, probably another. Kind of each coach's preference. Tournaments are pretty much the same as they were when I played, and they really haven't changed much in St. Louis since I was starting coaching. There's the only change we've seen here is U Trip. U Triple A is gone in St. Louis. There's no okay. Play. That's one okay. of the things when I played, everything was sanctioned by U Trip. Now, not, there's no U U Trip tournament singles at all. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's kind of changed to just the GMB has their own sanctioning that's kind of become a national. Game seven has gone national. Triple play starting to expand mm -hmm. out to other places, and game time expanding out to other places as well. Awesome. Okay, so and so it sounds like you guys are really lucky here, and those those big providers are you know running you know quality tournaments. And um, do you do you feel like the the tournaments have uh, I guess the the athletes you know success in mind as well as their own? I mean, you know, a lot of these people are running you know tournaments, and they run these you know larger organizations where they're running you know dozens, if not hundreds, of tournaments uh, across the country, and some circumstances uh, so of course they have to make a living and everyone's got to you know you know earn their part um but i think where you know we work with a lot of tournaments is that we see those who have the i guess the, the athletes and the, the teams in mind if it's a little bit older or if they're kind of a college recruiting tournament or showcase or um in your case just kind of providing like a, a great experience for the the teams and athletes um do, do you feel like that's the case there is that you know they're really focused on the, the teams and athletes as well as running a successful tournament yeah i would say all four of the big ones here do do a great job and it's about the players it's not about the tournaments per se and a lot of that is is tournaments is the directors kind of just just stepping away letting games happen there's no involvement there's not a lot of arguing most of the time from coaches you'll hear your this or that but for the most part sure yeah everyone does a fairly good job of making it about about the players and when you get to the high school level or high school age when it comes to recruiting you're playing a whole di different set of tournaments mm -hmm. who all do a fairly good and good job around here they provide top level competition if it's teams traveling from Arkansas or Iowa or heck in Colorado playing some of these tournaments here kind of all over. And a lot of them do a great job of getting college coaches out and kind of schools for in the area out, out to these games. Good, good. So I guess, you know, you, you don't feel like, um, and I'm definitely not trying to, to kind of lead you to this answer. I just want to, you know, you just see a lot of, uh, you know, posts and Instagram posts and Facebook comments that a lot of these tournaments are really just in it to make, you know, some quick money over a couple of years, and then they're probably gone because they can't sustain. So um, I, I think that's really great that, like I said, your, you know, local tournaments or in your immediate area uh, have done such a good job and, you know, it makes sense why they've been around and why you say they haven't really changched since you were. Yeah, pretty much the same. And they've all in, in GMB, I don't know how long and they have been, been a long, have been around, but I know 
going back, my brother is 20, and they have, have been around since he was eight or nine years old. He's been playing there. And game seven's been around since he was 11 or 12. So all these tournaments have been around a long time, and they've sustained it and continue to do a good job improving. Awesome. Now, in terms of looking at, you know, potential tournaments for, you know, some of the younger teams, they give like eight U, nine U uh, teams there, you know, that's obviously, I would think, a, a very different approach to, to, to the game than, say, you know, 13 or 14. Who is looking to, you know, probably move on to, you know, high school, that type of thing? Um, what kind of tournament or what kind of uh, events are you trying to bring those younger teams to? Is it more, you know, this is just a, a very fun day or two days just, you know, to keep the interest in the game, you know, alive and have fun for the families? What does that look like? What are you guys looking at? Uh, for the families in your organization? Yes, yeah, so in St. Louis, it's, it's kind of the same from 8U to 14U. It's very okay. similar. Uh, as you get older, you obviously, in teams, classify five by themselves better. Mm -hmm. So if you're mm -hmm. double A, we have single A, double A, triple A major here in St. Louis. And as you get older, teams, and teams do, do a better job classifying themselves and playing where and where they belong, per se. But one of the big things, like I, when I, with my 9U team, I look at, at tournaments and I try to figure out teams that, and teams that are in it and that I may know or, or that I can, can look up with all the resources we have in today's world. Because I'm looking for tournaments where I feel, feel like I'm not the best team, but I'm also mm -hmm. not necessarily at the bottom every weekend. I want to sure. play well, I want to win games. But if I play, play bad, I want to lose. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what I'm looking for. There's a good atmosphere where we're competitive, but we're not the best team around every weekend. But it's a great way for the kids to learn. We see good we see good pitchers and good teams and teams who do things and better than us. And it's great for the kids to go get their butts kicked once in a while. And it's great. Yeah, to yeah. Once in a while, it all mm -hmm. comes around, but not to do that every weekend and kind of discourage kids or get kids too high on this. Yeah. Per se, yeah. but trying to find a place that they fit and your team fits level wise. My biggest thing here that I look for comes to tournaments. For sure, yeah. I mean, absolutely. I don't think you know, like you said, going one way or the other. And you know, I'm sure there's all. Everyone has a story about a a team they were on or you know approach to to potentially join that they just you know chase championships and they just want to win every weekend. It'll do whatever it takes to win at all costs at nine U or something, you know, wild like that. Right. So uh, I think that's, you know, definitely an important lesson is to, you know, take your players to those tournaments and show them that, Hey, if you play well, we're going to do well, but if you don't, we're still not going to walk over teams. You're going to get your butt kicked. Absolutely. It's good. Yeah. It's good. In both ways, like I said. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So, yeah, I mean, you know, you talked about, uh, you know, tryouts are in July here. So, you know, I guess your, your summer season is just about to start. If someone is, you know, potentially looking at the organization or maybe they're moving here, um, what's the best way to kind of maybe start the, the process, you know, come up for an introduction or something? Um, you know, what's the best way to say contact you um, in terms of, you know, looking at potentially joining? Yeah, so you can go, go to our website, www.stlouisbandits.com. We have a form for interested Okay. Companies fill out that sheet and that sheet will be emailed to me with their contact information i will reach out to them via email or phone or you can give me a call or shoot me a text at 314-443-6831 i'll be more than happy to, to talk to speak with anyone who's interested or anybody that has any questions about what we do or heck if someone's interested in expanding our products somewhere else we're always open to talk and help out and see what we can do for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll definitely list all that uh, kind of in the you know comments or description, you know, wherever we uh, get this posted. Um, uh, and, and so this is kind of a very open ended question or, you know, an opportunity for you. Uh, is there anything you want to leave with, you know, potential players or parents uh, or other coaches in the community? Um, just kind of a, you know, final thought, final words or something that you want to get out there, whether it's about the bandits or about baseball or, or whatever you'd like. I don't kind of want to leave it open to you. Okay. I'll start with, 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 with discussing and what we do. And once again, real quick. Sure. So yeah. Things that the bandits do that, uh, that I don't know 
how other organizations do it. I'm not going to comment on that. Yeah. But yeah. Our family atmosphere, our training, and the communication from the top of the organization to an 8U parent, if there's a question, or getting set up for lessons or anything of that nature, I think we, we do a top notch job of. We have the relationship where if a coach has a question, he can call me, I can come out to his practice, he can call Matt Shadow, he can call kind of who so other people in the organization, and we're able to help them and kind of help those coaches learn and expand. Then kind of my last piece of advice is always to any family who contacts me about looking to come to our organization or an individual team, or if I'm ever asked for advice from anyone, I like to say, try to find a place where you think your kid can grow and thrive, and it's a place that he fits. If your kid's a double-A player, don't go play on, on a trip, on a triple-A major team team and be the 11 hitter all year. If your kid's a triple-A major player, don't go play double-A and, and be the three-hitter and hit 700. Find yeah. a place where your son fits. Find a coach where you think he can learn and thrive under. That's yeah, I think that's fantastic advice, right? I mean, that's, you always want to be pushing and growing, um, but never, you know, stuck in the bottom with that anywhere to go. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, I you know, you know, want to thank you for your time. And you guys got a lot going on here and we're kind of gearing up for, for a big season, I'm sure. Um, so again, just want to thank you. Um, you know, again, we'll post everything uh, and all the information in, in our comment section here. So if anyone listening uh, or watching, you know, wants to get in contact uh, with, uh, with you, the organization or any of the teams, kind of check out some more information, uh, you know, read below. And uh, yeah, we will uh, talk to you soon and best of luck with this season. Thank you so much, Sean. Absolutely. Thank you.